All those smart people are laughing at me. Stop it, cruel smart people. Stop it. Well, of course, I don't believe in man-made climate change because there is no evidence for it. Uh, in fact, carbon dioxide is controlled by world temperatures rather than the other way around. Uh, carbon dioxide has zero effect. I repeat, zero effect. No effect whatsoever. By comparing our world with other worlds, you can see a lot of things that can go wrong. Venus, for example, has this immense greenhouse effect. Surface temperature is hot enough to melt uh, tin or lead. Anybody who says the greenhouse effect is, uh, is just some fantasy, all I have to do is look at Venus, a very important object lesson. Here we have a small yellow star, typical among billions in the universe. Of course, um, this one has eyeballs, and it blinks, and it's staring at us. But this is a small yellow star, much like Sol that Earth happens to be orbiting around. I will now add a planet. I will call it, oh, I don't know, Earth. There we go, I have added planet Earth. Of course you can't see it because the scale is off, so I need to rescale the image, shrink the sun, and then maybe Earth will show. Still nothing, need to shrink it farther. Well golly, Earth is still the size of maybe a quarter of a pixel, so it's not showing up. I will have to inflate the size of Earth to about the size of the Sun. Then we can see it, perhaps. The distance between the Sun and Earth, on average, is one astronomical unit. That is 149,597,871 kilometers. I am now going to calculate the energy budget between the Sun and the Earth and convert the results into a global average temperature. To do this, I am going to assume that the Earth and the Sun are in thermal equilibrium, and I'm also going to assume that Earth is a sphere. To calculate how much energy Earth receives from the Sun at any given moment, I will take that sphere and chop it in half. That leaves only the portion of the sphere that faces the Sun. Since the Sun is so far away, its rays can be considered to be parallel. So I will convert Earth to a disk to make the calculations easier. By direct measurement of solar radiation of all wavelengths via artificial satellite, we know that the surface area of Earth as a disk has an influx of energy equal to 1,370 watts per square meter. It is important to note that this is the value that Earth receives. Other planets and their satellites will receive different amounts because they are different distances from the Sun, and of course they have different diameters. Celestial bodies also reflect a part of the solar energy that they receive back into space before that energy reaches the planet's surface. This reflection is called albedo, and Earth's measured albedo is currently about 30%. This is due to clouds in the atmosphere and ice and light-colored dirt on the surface of Earth. Earth therefore reflects approximately 411 watts per square meter back into space. That leaves about 959 watts per square meter that Earth's surface receives from the Sun when solar irradiance is calculated as if Earth were a disk that is facing the Sun. To spread that amount of energy over the entire surface area of a sphere, one must multiply it by one-fourth. This yields, for Earth, a value of about 240 watts per square meter. Note that this is an estimate, and the numbers will change slightly depending on which measurements one uses for total solar irradiance and albedo. To estimate Earth's global average temperature, we apply Wien's law for blackbody radiation, and then we apply the Stefan Boltzmann law for the power radiated by that black body. We find that Earth's global average temperature, if it were in thermal equilibrium with the sun, should be about 256 Kelvin, which is negative 21 Celsius, or negative 6 Fahrenheit. The observed global average temperature of Earth is about 288 Kelvin, which is about 15 Celsius, or 59 Fahrenheit. The difference of about 15 Kelvin is only explainable by the physics of greenhouse gas effects. We can do the same calculations for the planet Mars. Mars has a solar irradiance of 589 watts per square meter and an albedo of 0.25. The solar flux is 110 watts per square meter, which yields a thermal equilibrium value of 210 Kelvin. The observed value is 214 Kelvin, and there is, of course, a very slight greenhouse effect on Mars. 
Venus has a solar irradiance value of 2,611 watts per square meter. Its albedo is a whopping 0.75, with a solar flux value of 163 watts per square meter. If in thermal equilibrium with the sun, Venus would have a global average temperature of a mere 232 Kelvin. But the observed temperature is 735 Kelvin, which is 462 Celsius or 863 Fahrenheit. This is due chiefly to the very dense atmosphere of carbon dioxide on Venus. Uh, carbon dioxide has zero effect. I repeat, zero effect. No effect whatsoever. Just fucking shot myself! <laughs>